Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'll be teaching you how to make braised beef short ribs. Now this is a cut of meat. The cut itself is not terribly an expensive cut, um, but for whatever reason the cost at the store it was quite high and pricey. So our family typically only enjoys this recipe maybe once or twice a year. Um, after we've purchased a, a cow that's been farm raised from our friends, um, or if I can happen to find them on sale at the supermarket. I was able to find these on sale today, so we're gonna be making this recipe. It is a family recipe, so this will easily be able to feed four to six people. When you start this recipe, I want you to go ahead and preheat your oven to 300 degrees and give yourself plenty of time. This is one that's gonna take not too long for the initial preparation, but you will need to check on it over the course of about three hours every half hour or so. So just make sure as this is cooking and making your house smell delicious that you have time available to be able to check on this one. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Here are the supplies you're gonna need to make today's recipe. Your main supply is going to be a Dutch oven. It is a large, heavy duty, oven safe pot. You'll need a spoon for stirring and a tongs to be able to maneuver your short ribs. You'll need a cutting board and a sharp knife for chopping. And if you don't already have an open bottle of wine, a wine opener. Let's talk about the ingredients that you're gonna need for today's recipe. First ingredient is gonna be your short ribs, six to eight short ribs. You wanna to try to get them cut all fairly to the same size if you can. You're gonna pat them dry and then generously season them with salt and pepper. I like to season my short ribs on a plate. The reason for that is because the plate then catches all of the salt and pepper and I can uh, use the ribs and turn them up on their sides and ends to scoop the remaining salt and pepper up so that they get seasoned on all sides. You'll need some olive oil, salt and pepper for seasoning to taste. You'll need some egg noodles. You'll need some good red wine. Now the trick with the red wine is they say if you wouldn't drink it, if it's not good enough for you to drink and enjoy, don't use it. I don't drink red wine, so I'm trusting my neighbors that I sat their cats who gave me this bottle of wine that this is a good bottle of wine. You'll want some beef broth, two cups of beef broth. You'll need one to two tablespoons of whole black pepper. I use less because my kids don't enjoy black pepper as much as my husband and I do, so I can always add more later. Two whole bay leaves, one to two tablespoons of whole coriander seeds. I use a little bit less, again, because my kids don't appreciate the flavor as much as I do. You'll need three medium yellow onions. Now these onions look a little bit interesting. These are from our garden. Everything that you see on this plate is from our garden that we, we grew. I'm towards end of season on our last batch of onions, and so I'm using what I have. Um, mine are all different sizes. This recipe is not exact, so if you don't have three whole onions or some are larger, some are smaller, just use what you have. You want four medium carrots. Um, these carrots I just picked this morning and you can see they're all different shapes and sizes. That's not gonna matter for this recipe. So the equivalent of four medium carrots. Fresh sprigs of rosemary and fresh thyme. These are also from our garden. So I just went out and picked what we had. And then I've also got garlic that's hanging on from our last harvest. And you need the equivalent of about eight cloves of garlic. To get started, I'm gonna prepare my fresh ingredients that I harvested from the garden and from our past harvest of garlic and onions. I have my onion here. I'm simply gonna cut off the top, set that aside for compost, cut off the bottom. I've pre-peeled it so you don't see any peel on it any longer. And I'm just gonna cut it in a rough chop about eight to 10 pieces. So you end up with a wedge, so nothing too huge. Cut off the top, cut off the bottom, 
discard those. This is a smaller onion, so it's probably only going to get cut in fours. And this one, you can see, grew a little bit funky. It's almost like two, maybe three onions grew together. So I'm just going to do some cleanup work on it. And same thing, rough chop it. Next, I'll work on our carrots. Now these are fresh out of the garden. So all I need to do is basically trim up the roots, trim off the tops. I don't need to peel them because they're nice and tender. Literally just picked them this morning. And then I'll just cut them in big chunks. Now I'm gonna put these in a separate bowl because my chickens love them. So they will get treats this morning. notice I didn't give any of the onions to the chickens. My chickens don't really care for them and uh, so those will go straight into the compost. Now if you wanted to with the carrot tops you could save them and put them on a little plate with some water and it'll grow some additional carrot tops. Some people like to put carrot tops in salads and eat them fresh, um, but I think my chickens enjoy them more than I do, so there you go. Okay, those are done. Now for my garlic cloves, I'm just gonna try to separate the cloves here. I'll put the peels for the compost. Okay. And you can see my garlic, the two different heads look a little bit different. They were different varieties of garlic that grew this last year. So I'm towards the end of our garlic harvest. So my garlic, some of the cloves are smaller. You can see I have a little bit more, a little bit less. Now you can peel this garlic several different ways. You can take your knife, blade away from you. You can put your clove down and give it a little smash. And then that helps the peel come off real easy. Just like that. I have a little silicone tool that I can also put a clove of garlic into. Similar concept. Roll it and mash it with your hands. And then you can actually pour it out and you can see the peel came out with the clove separated. So I'm gonna work to do that for the rest of the cloves of the garlic here and then I'll meet you back over at the stove and we'll work on the next part of the recipe. To get started, I put my Dutch oven on medium high heat on my range top. I've added two tablespoons of olive oil and heated that through. And then I've added the pre-seasoned short ribs in. We're gonna sear all sides of these short ribs. The process will take approximately 10 to 15 minutes to get all sides browned. We're not gonna cook them all the way through at this point. Once all sides are seared, we'll remove these out and then we'll start our vegetables.
Okay, so all the edges on these have been browned. I'm going to take them out and set them aside. So I've removed all of the short ribs and set them on a plate aside to keep separate. We're going to get back to these in just a minute. I'm going to add two more tablespoons of olive oil. To this, we're going to add our onions and our carrots and a little pinch of salt. There we go. About a teaspoon. And we're going to let these on medium until they get nice and soft. About 10 minutes. So these have been sauteing for about 10 minutes and they're at the point now where they wilted down. They're not browned. They're just picked up all of the uh, juices from the short ribs that we browned in here. So this is a good time to add in your fresh aromatics. So we're gonna add in our fresh sprigs of thyme, rosemary, our peppercorns, coriander, our cloves of garlic, and our two bay leaves. I'm going to let these saute in here until I can just start to smell them. It'll be about 30 seconds to a minute. All right. Now we're going to go back to our short ribs, and we are going to nestle these in here. I'm going to start by nestling them in, trying to get them with the bone on the upside. Stick them in here right on top. If you have to adjust them a little bit, that's okay. okay. Once these are all nestled in here, we're going to add our beef broth. It's about two cups. I typically say that's about a whole can if you're getting it from the store. Pour that right on in. And then you're going to add your wine. Red wine, you're going to add, again, about two cups. You're going to pour that in here until it just comes to the top of your short ribs. Okay, so that's about two cups. You'll turn your heat up a little bit, back to medium high. And you'll let this come to a simmer. Now that this has come to a nice simmer, we're going to go ahead and put the lid on it. And we're going to transfer it into the oven at 300 degrees for three hours. Now those are going to stay in the oven for three hours. Every 30 minutes, I will go in and check on them. 
turn the short ribs over and put them back in the oven. So 300 degrees, three hours, turning every 30 minutes. Okay, so you can see that my short ribs are now out of the oven. And next to them, I have about a 12 ounce bag of egg noodles that I have cooked per the package directions. And they're ready to go to receive my short ribs and make a complete meal. So we're gonna take the lid off of this and see what we've got here. You can see, oh, they just look like they are falling off the bone, which is exactly what we want. So everything that we need is still left in this pot. So we're gonna go ahead and take these short ribs out. And they, be careful, they will fall off the bone. We're gonna place them onto the egg noodles over here. And then any sprigs of thyme or rosemary that remain, we'll pull those off and then we're just gonna discard them. Okay, so the short ribs have all been separated from the big pot, and I've pulled out also the big chunks of carrots. Meanwhile, everything left in the pot that I couldn't just get out by hand, I ran through a strainer, and you can see I have it here separating. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna skim off the top part of the oil that's been separating, and then I'm gonna use the remaining portion to make the sauce for my pasta and the rest of my short ribs. So now that the oil has been skimmed off of the juices from the short ribs. I'm gonna turn my burner on to medium high heat. I'm gonna return all those juices back to the very same pot. Now we're gonna let this come to a simmer and we're gonna keep it simmering until it reduces down and gets a little bit thicker of a consistency. And after that, we're gonna pour it over the short ribs and the pasta and that will be our sauce. Okay, so you can see the amount of fluid in here has really, really decreased. And I wanna show you something about what it means to make a reduction sauce. So if you were to take a spoon and dip it in, you'll see there's a nice thick coating of liquid that just doesn't leave the spoon. And that's when you know your sauce is ready because what's gonna happen is it's gonna do the same thing to the pasta or the ingredients that you're putting it over. So I'm gonna remove this from the heat and then we're gonna add it to our short ribs and our egg noodles. So I've just poured that lovely reduction sauce from our short rib liquid over the pasta and the short ribs here. And now we are ready to enjoy. I hope you've learned some new tips and tricks about how to make braised beef short ribs. The best part about this recipe is eating them, but the next best thing is the fact that you're able to feed your whole family using one pot and one serving dish. Enjoy everyone. If you learned something like this video, comment below, subscribe to the channel. Till next time.